Okay. Hi guys, I'm Heike from Finland. Unfortunately, I can't join you guys in Slovenia, but I'm here to virtual reality to tell you about discovering relations in knowledge graphs using the Sambo model. So, uh, we are talking about basically relational search here, and uh, basic idea in relational search is finding uh, interesting connections between two entities, in this case in knowledge graph. And this uh, main word here is interesting because bigger sense may be to read out the uninteresting connections. So we are not interested in, for example, if to do uh, uh, resources in the knowledge graph or instances of all thing. So not really just that, that uh, if like two persons are, for example, related to each other, that might be interesting. Or there was a student or teacher, that might be interesting. So we use this uh, knowledge based method to mean relations from knowledge graph. And we use this uh, construct queries that uh, represent uh, interesting connection types. So we have uh, basically a separate uh, construct query for each of the uh, connection types. And for example, this might be the student of, or like a parent of, or this kind of connection. Uh, there's also like, uh, can be sort of second degree connections that are created going through basically, for example, for the shared teacher. But basically for two students of uh, same, the same uh, teacher as well. And we represent these relations as instances of relation class. So each individual relations will be uh, the instance of this uh, relation class. And this, of course, will, uh, so it, it is to make the positive church uh, convenient and fast and so on. But it's uh, also there can be a lot of, uh, a lot of these relations instances for when we get even to the second degree connection. So, uh, so this, this can be an issue. So obviously there will be a lot of, for example, third, third teacher connections compared to, to some teacher. So uh, we basically need to put some, uh, some kind of limit there. What we have, but obviously the relations get also a little bit less interesting when the degree goes up. So uh, relations have, uh, this relation instance that we create uh, with constructs have their, uh, their properties uh, based at the two endpoints of the connection, which is to here like perhaps two, two persons. And we are using direct relations, so there is separate uh, subject and predicate, uh, no, sorry, subject and object uh, for the relation. Then there's the relation type. And then well, human readable explanation of the connection. And it can also have other other properties. As it. Uh, here, here is an uh, example of the uh, model uh, model of the relation instance. So it is like it's a type of relation, and then there's a relation subject and relation object. So there's person A and person B, and then there's a relation type. Uh, it was the student of. Uh, relation and then there is a, a label that represents the human readable explanation so a was a student of b in this case it might be and then there's a separate instance of relation for each each connection here great uh then uh, there can of course be a huge number of uh, uh, relations like this, and then e even even after we have read it, there are only so-called so interesting relations. And uh, to further search them, uh, filter them, uh, sort of in a way, user can 
uh, subjectively defined then even more dangerous thing is perhaps uh, we have facet search and because the entities like the, for example the two persons here can have the properties like occupation auto in interview we don't really have uh, consolidated occupations but at least as we have some kind of uh, some kind of occupations at least uh, perhaps uh, country of origin, birthplace, your gender, so on. And then this allows us to uh, search for relations between larger groups. For example, uh, Finnish painters, we select a Finnish from the country of origin, a painter from the occupation facet, and then uh, we can compare it. Uh, is there more connections for this kind of people for the Netherlands or Austria, for example? And this is because the facet so hit counts, the rate is selection. And these relative numbers can be, at least for me, often more interesting than even the individual connections. So there are uh, currently some issues uh, with Intavia that is uh, why we have uh, struggled a little, little bit. So, of course, our constant queries expect that all, all the data to be in uniform format. This isn't really the case there are at the moment a lot of issues in Italia, but of course it's a work in process progress. Uh, and then of course I think Intavia is currently missing labels for the and, even, and any other properties for the uh, consolidated concepts. So this is actually a problem like for faceted search we uh, really need to then create ourselves it's got some kind of uh, individual single labels on them. But here, here we can say we have some kind of working implementation at the moment. Uh, not, not in such a good shape that I could uh, actually open it so uh, live, but uh, I have a screenshot here as an example. So here I have a, a search for student teacher relations where teacher is person from the Austrian data set and student is from the Finnish data set. So the, uh, what you can see here is that I've made selection from the relation type facet. So there's a student teacher relations and then also I've selected. So that is the teacher, teacher basically is the, uh, is from Austrian data set. And then what we can see, here, which is open here, is the other facet for the other, other persons, country uh, of origin. And there I have selected Finland. So now I should have uh, connections where the uh, uh, teacher student connections where the teacher is uh, Austrian and the student is Finnish. And we can see there are four, four such uh, relations. For example, uh, Jean Chipelius was student of Robert Fuchs. Uh, and also Jean Chipelius was actually a student of Carl Goldmark as well, apparently. And there are a couple of other examples as well. Uh, and then, of course, these individual lessons can be interesting, but that, again, for me, what's more interesting are these uh, relative numbers. We can see that, uh, of course, the Austria uh, here is the 391 hit count, Slovenia is 16, and Finland is 4, which means that the Austrian teachers have much more often Austrian students, uh, which, which makes sense. There's a Slovenia, uh, much less, but still uh, four, uh, four times, I believe, more than Finland, which is 4. This, of course, uh, also makes sense. Uh, Slovenia is much closer to uh, Austria. Than Finland is. Uh, we are actually currently missing, I believe, Netherlands data completely for some some issues. Uh, but hopefully we can get that here as well. But uh, even though this uh, red Austrian usually have Austrian students and Slovenia is more than Finnish, uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's not surprising in any ways, but it sort of demonstrates how you can you can get this relative numbers. And perhaps when you make uh, a selection of occupations, perhaps maybe you will find some uh, surprising stuff there as well. So, thank you. Uh, we are still continuing the work here. Hopefully we can 
come up with some kind of nice nice demonstrations that can actually be used to find connections between people between especially for people between uh, across the countries but of course also within the country. Okay, thank you.